Recently, I did a video where I talked about the anti-2018 smartphone, a device that didn't follow all the trends, or at least most that we've seen last year. No notch, no edge-to-edge -edge display, no thin and light build. And this is what I would call version two. I'm Jaime Rivera with Pocket Now, and let's talk about the Sony Xperia XZ3. I love Sony headphones and speakers, but their popularity has diminished over the year. And what's odd is that Sony has still managed to launch more flagships than almost every other company. If I'm counting correctly, the Sony Xperia XZ3 would be like the third or fourth flagship of 2018. So let me begin this video by telling you what I like about this phone, and it actually begins with this build and the feel of the phone. We've got a glass-on-glass -glass front and back with curved borders and an aluminum trim, and this phone is unapologetic about its thickness. But that actually comes at an advantage. This phone is very ergonomic in the hand. In front, just assume that you're seeing a Pixel 2 XL, but with a great screen. This 6-inch PO LED display at Quad HD Plus resolution is vibrant, saturated, and yes, very 2017 with its symmetrical curves on each corner. Best of all, there are dual firing speakers that are plenty loud. The fact that you can't really use a pro computer as a notepad. And Sony's got this vibrating gimmick that uh, will vibrate whenever you're playing music with the beat. I'd switch it off if I were you. It seriously just drains battery. About the only thing that's 2018 are the specifications. We've got a Qualcomm Snapdragon 845, 4 gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of expandable storage, IP68 water and dust resistance, fast charging through USB-C, Qi wireless charging capabilities, and a 3300 milliamp hour battery that actually performed really well in our tests. But right about now is where I tell you already where I'm mixed about this device, and it begins with the photography experience. This is probably the only phone with a dedicated camera button left, which I love, but we've got a single camera in the front and the back. The primary is of 19 megapixels, f2 aperture, 1.22 microns, and the wider 25 millimeter equivalent. Photos are good during the day. I wish I could say remarkable, given that most flagships today use Sony camera sensors, but it seems that Sony leaves itself last and just provides a good experience. The aggressive AI and scene detection is seriously hard to switch off, and odd design choices like HDR only being available in manual controls can make the experience really cumbersome. In low light, the camera is good, but not great. If you can hold the phone steady, at least. And then there's this portrait mode that's pretty much inexistent. And sure, there's only one camera sensor, but it tells you bokeh mode photos are coming, you point, you take the shot, and then it tells you that it wasn't able to achieve it. Just like flat out really bad. And then the selfie cameras of 13 megapixels, f1.9 aperture and a wider 23 millimeter equivalent, with photos being good the moment you switch off all the beauty modes which are crazy aggressive and set by default. And then video recording is good. There's an intelligent steady shot set by default on the primary camera, which is great. But the funny part is that this same feature is not set by default for selfie video. It tells you that it's set on standard stabilization, which is not at all good. Make sure you go through the settings and set on intelligent steady shot on the secondary camera, which actually doesn't affect the crop. I do praise this. And then there's the software experience. I mean, kudos to Sony for including Android Pie at a time when it's hard to find, but uh, why reinvent the wheel with a user experience that's counterintuitive? It took me a day or two to figure out how to remove the app tray button and leave the gesture, but then you swipe up and it requires you to swipe left or right for applications. And those of you looking for full screen gestures or the Pixel Pill, again, this phone feels like 2017, so there's no option or I just probably haven't found the setting because those are also convoluted. Now, once you figure out all these hurdles, I do have to be fair, the user experience is fast and fluid, and it keeps things that I care about from the Google experience like the Google feed on the launcher. But of course, there's no such thing as a perfect product. Let me tell you what I don't like about the phone, and it starts with the rest of the software gimmicks. Like for example, because there are curves in this display, there are edge menus, but the sensitivity is so off that you will be so annoyed by day one, you'll end up doing what I did by just switching them off. 
And last but not least, let's cue in this button arrangement. I mean, Sony did make some changes and raised the height of the fingerprint scanner and the side buttons when compared to the Xperia XZ2, but I still find my finger landing on the camera lens instead of the fingerprint scanner. I even wonder if my photos could have been better if I cleaned the camera lens every single time I tried to unlock the phone. So to conclude, what can I say about the Sony Xperia XZ3? It's a good phone, and if you're a Sony fan, I have no problem in telling you to go buy this phone. It's comparable to 2018 flagships in performance and specifications, and it gives us breathing room in this sea of notched phones. It does so at a cost. This phone is not any less expensive than most flagships out there, and I do realize that there are certain design choices that are not necessarily the most popular. So if you're a Sony fan, sure, go for it. But if you're not, I think there's a good list of 2018 flagships that I would rather recommend over this one. But let us know in the comments down below, what do you think about the Sony Xperia XZ3? Do you like it or not? And while you're at it, make sure you follow us on social media, subscribe to both our channels, English and Spanish, for more videos like this one. You can follow me on Twitter, Jaime underscore Rivera, on Instagram at Jaime Rivera. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.